All right, you guys, these are the three piles. We have group number one with the zebra calcite, group two with the skeleton key, and group three with the tiger's eye. Uh, if you guys need a moment to meditate on which pile is calling your name, you guys are free to do that right now. And if you want to fix more than one pile, you guys are always welcome to do so. Hi, group one. I'm so happy to be here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead, you guys, and obviously start off with rolling our dice. This is dessert. Just a reminder to everybody, this is dessert. If your sign doesn't show up, it's okay. <laughs> oh, we have a Sagittarius and Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising. Hello, Sagittarius. Hello, Scorpio. Capricorn and Gemini. One more. Aquarius. Just Aquarius, you guys. Okay. So it's really interesting because I feel like this entire reading is very synchronistic. It's really interesting. We have the hanged man as our first card that popped up and the hanged man you guys talks about being stuck feeling stagnant the way i'm interpreting this you guys in this particular reading with the energy that i'm picking up on it feels like repeating patterns it feels like i continue to date the same man i continue to date the same woman even though it's a different woman or a different man um some of you guys are regurgitating like trauma between you and your parents with your uh romantic partners some of you are regurgitating trauma from perhaps your teenage years or your like your childhood with your romantic partners and it's like you're picking people who have these qualities that are not necessarily um good for you or not necessarily in alignment with who you are and it just doesn't it just doesn't feel right and i know the hanging man talks about like i just said you guys being stuck up in a tree it's stagnation it's not moving sometimes it talks about needing to let go of stuff but for me again with the energy that i'm picking up on it feels like i'm in this frick fracking cycle that i cannot get out of and i'm so exhausted like i feel like no matter what i do no matter who i date i keep dating the same mother freaking person and I'm tired of it um so that's what I'm picking up on with this you guys now we also have the ten of swords this is freaking it literally says it literally says this despair okay it's just despair so the way that I see this is obviously not good okay I'm interpreting this as you have not met your husband or your wife yet you've had very traumatic relationships or perhaps you've had an absent of relationships right because I feel like despair can also be interpreted for those of you who feel extremely lonely right you can see this as like being stuck single being stuck up in a tree and not having any type of romantic options and then feeling despair from the loneliness so we can read this both ways but regardless like our love life has been very disappointing and we felt a lot of pain from this okay now the ten of swords talks about sudden endings and tragedy and like drama and blah 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 it's not good stuff it's really just no bueno okay so sorry guys if you have met your husband or your wife you guys perhaps you're relating to feeling like this or perhaps you're relating to feeling like yeah i did feel stuck i did feel stagnant and then i met them and the things like <laughs> changed and opened up right um but yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm picking up on you guys now we also have the four of discs okay and the four of pentacles you guys talks about holding something close to the chest it's not again wanting to like let things flow very freely not wanting to let things flow naturally this talks about financially like holding back however we're talking about love right now you guys so the way that i am interpreting this it's very much like i have a wall up like i have a wall up and i'm not letting it down i'm holding my emotions close to the vest because again we do have this tennis of which talks about despair and disappointment and feeling betrayed so it makes sense that our emotion our emotional state would be very held back and very like oh, you know and we have the five of cups you guys and this is disappointment and being really freaking upset that we just lost our three cups i mean usually there's three cups and there's two cups left over but whatever the five of cups talks about disappointment okay we're hella disappointed that our cups fell over because we we're like oh we have five cup five cups i'm so happy i'm so joyous i'm like well, yippee ki yay i got five cups and then they spilled and you're like <sighs> jokes on me you know like that's what it feels like uh but this is just disappointment so there's a lot of disappointment in our love life you guys there's something that just fell oh okay this was an oracle card that came out for you guys earlier i guess i didn't put it away properly the next one we have you guys is the hermit 
Now, this makes me feel a lot better because the hermit talks about going within, okay? It talks about seeking like self-validation, self-approval. It's like working on yourself. It's like looking at your shadow. It's like looking at all the icky things about yourself that you don't want to look at. It's improving oneself. It's going on a spiritual journey. It's really learning and understanding who it is that you are on a cellular level and understanding what you need to move forward, right? Also, it talked about isolation, you guys. So spending a lot of time alone, spending a lot of time, again, trying to understand oneself. Now, again, we can interpret this in a few different ways, you guys. For those of you where you have been in relationships that have been toxic and disgusting and horrible, I'm so sorry that you've experienced that, but you may enter into a period of isolation and you may just push away relationships um during the time before you meet your husband or your wife for those of you where you've been single for a really long time i'm seeing this as like being really sad and disappointed and not wanting to open up because you've been single for such a long time and then kind of going on an, a journey from within and figuring out like what who you are without a relationship like figuring out who you are what you want and not caring like not putting so much um importance on having a relationship and the last tarot card I have here, you guys, is Temperance. And Temperance talks about balance. She talks about pouring from one cup into another. She talks about um, equality. She talks about like being able to just like, okay, like I'm gonna, I'm going to allow this situation to just be what it is. I'm going to not deplete myself. I'm going to create harmony and balance. And that's what it talks about. So I really see this, you guys, as like, How are you meeting your husband and your wife? Because again, for those of you where you have not met them yet, I feel like the way you're meeting them is through focusing on yourself, through understanding yourself, through trying to heal yourself, through bringing balance and harmony into your own life, bringing happiness into your own life, and not focusing so much on I need a partner, not focusing so much on I need to find love or I need to have this like blossoming relationship. I feel like you're going to meet your husband and your wife, and I hate to say this because it's so freaking cliche, but I feel like you're gonna meet your husband or your wife when you least expect it. I feel like you're gonna meet them when you're not necessarily seeking them, right? I feel like you're meeting them when you're seeking yourself, when you're searching for yourself, when you're on that journey of like self-development and self-happiness. Also for the zodiac signs that are here, you guys, we have Virgo and we also have Sagittarius that popped up in the cards. Um, the first oracle card we have here, you guys, is Whale and Orca Elders. It says, share your song, frequency of sound, um, diving deep. So I'm seeing this, you guys, as being very vocal about what you want, perhaps with the universe or with yourself. I feel like oftentimes, you guys, we kind of sell ourselves short and we're like, oh, I'm okay with like dealing with this quality in a person I don't really like because I just want to find a partner or I just want to have a relationship so I'm okay with settling and I feel like what this card is saying with this is like diving deep into oneself and understanding what it is you want and what it is you deserve and I'm not talking about physical attributes you guys I'm talking about emotional and like moral things like the soul connection right because you can't you can't change that you can't alter that you can't like I don't know. I just, when I'm talking about love readings, you guys, I'm literally almost never, unless I specify it, talking about physical attributes. So to me, this sounds like we are just really voicing what it is that we want and making sure that we are holding ourselves to our own standards, making sure that we are holding, um, like we're not going on a date and being like, oh, he was so nice. And like, I don't like this about him or that about him. And he kind of is like a little flaky, but I'm going to put up with it anyways, because like, he's just so cute. And like, I just want to be with someone like, no, it's like, I'm holding myself to my standard and I'm not going to allow myself to get excited or to over romanticize someone who is not in alignment with what I want and what I expect in a relationship. And maybe that sounds really harsh, you guys, but I feel like for some of you, you may have settled in the past for someone who, you know, like wasn't treating you the best or, you know, wasn't giving you what they should have been giving you and I just feel like in this situation you guys when you're finding your husband and your wife you're not in a place where that's acceptable like you're not allowed to be flaky on me you're not allowed to be inconsistent and I'm still going to be excited like that's not how this is going down that's not how this relationship is going to blossom <sighs> 
we have the seven star sisters and it says birth and creation tapestry of life and expression so again expression is really coming out you guys it's very important that we are very expressive with what it is that we want and what it is that we expect in a partner and not settling for any less you guys also this creation i feel like is talking about creating a life around you that makes you happy that brings satisfaction to you and your own being and not waiting for someone else to like paint the the brush strokes on your canvas right like you taking control of your paintbrush and deciding to make your own painting and not waiting for someone to come around to give you like a vision we have the great serving and this is mars energy anger conflict softening to love so this is kind of literally in one card the story of how i'm seeing you guys meeting your husband or your wife i'm seeing this very much as like us having a very rough start to love having a very um disappointing not great not fantastic very just like bleh, start to love and quite literally like through this process we are going to have to learn to love ourselves we're going to have to learn to find joy in our own being and in our own bodies and our own selves and through that we are softening to the potential of love outside of that right but it's like this process we're going through it's this journey we're going through it's not a straight shot forward it's like we got to go through this way and that way we have like curves and bobs and corners to cut and this and that like it's not just a straight path forward to your husband or your wife it feels like there are some obstacles it feels like there are some things that we have to overcome and face and work out internally before getting that we have loosen your grip and it says coping mechanisms destiny addiction let god in loosen your grip for some of you like love and relationships is really really important and for some of you you really do value having a partner and i want you guys to know right now that's completely okay like you're allowed to value having a partner you're allowed to want a relationship you're allowed to want to be in love and to have a husband or to have a wife like that's completely valid and it's okay you guys um the point in me saying like you're going on a self journey is not to say that you're undeserving of love or that you can't want love because you're always allowed to want love like we are love we're allowed to want love but the way i'm seeing this it's like taking some of that desire to have love for someone else and taking a little bit of that and putting it into yourself i feel like will go a long way in regards to you meeting someone who is going to be worthy of you because that's what this whole situation feels like right it feels like i have to value myself to make sure that i'm allowing someone into my life who's also going to value me because when you don't value who you are you guys when you don't love yourself and i know some people find self-love very like silly and cliche but when you don't love yourself I do feel like you are more susceptible, you are more open to allowing people into your life who also don't love you the way that you deserve to be loved, right? And I would hope that everybody who's getting married or most people who are getting married are with a partner who loves them and who wants to treat them well. I obviously don't want you guys to be in a marriage where you're unhappy or where your partner doesn't treat you well or where they're mean to you. So I feel like that's why this whole situation may be occurring and for some of you you may enter into a marriage where it is like that and you are you do end up hurt and disappointed right and then you need to go on this self journey and find balance and then like find someone who is going to be a better match for you i don't think all of you are going to go through that where you have like a first husband or a first wife and then like you get remarried later on for some of you that will be the case though so a lot of energy here there's a lot of sadness here you guys and i just want you guys to know that it's gonna be okay and for those of you where like you have not had like your first serious relationship i think the biggest advice i can give you is just make sure that you're living a life that is nourishing for you and just make sure that you are not compromising like who you are and what you want in a partner just to have a relationship like i want to really make sure that the message that you guys receive today is a message of like in loving yourself and taking care of yourself and finding balance and harmony within yourself, you are then going to be able to find your husband or your wife a lot easier. <sighs> okay. The next card I have here is honoring the masculine. This says respecting men, embracing the masculine divine. Now, obviously you guys, this does not have to be talking about a literal man. This could just be talking about masculine energy. Um, when I see this, you guys, I see this as like honoring action oriented energy or honoring um very like decisive 
I'm making a plan type energy. I don't know if this is even talking for some of you, this could be talking about like honoring the masculine within yourself and honoring your inner like protective instincts, honoring your inner like, I'm going to do what's best for me. I'm going to focus on me. Honoring your inner masculine may really help you guys bring in your future spouse, may help bring in your future partner because I feel like for some of you, this, especially because it says respect, there may be a need for you guys to have more self-respect. And I mean to say that in like the nicest way possible. I'm so sorry if that sounds mean. Um, but having more self-respect for some of you may play a major role in how it is that you are meeting your husband or your wife. We also have a guide or a mentor, a trust, a trustworthy ally. So this may be you guys sharing your dating experiences with your friends and really bouncing off like how does your feeling with this person? How does your feeling with that person off of your friends? Finding someone that you can really rely on, finding someone that you can really trust to help give you the proper guidance in your relationships or finding the someone who you really can like be like, okay, I know this person cares about me. I know this person loves me. Um, let me go to them for advice about this person or that person. And don't be so silly willy nilly, you guys, about who you're sharing your like romantic experiences with like if you're talking to a friend about someone that you're dating make sure that that friend really does love you and really does care about you because honestly I mean even if they do sometimes friends can be very very jealous you guys because of their own situation or because what's going on with them so just make sure that whoever it is you're talking to and sharing your experience with this person really does have your best interest at heart and they're not you know they don't got like jealousy in their soul so yeah I feel like that may be very uh, helpful for some of you though to have someone where you can bounce off like what's going on in your love life so you can kind of have a little bit of a soundboard we have air this is open-mindedness objectivity and learning some of you guys may be meeting your future spouse in school in university um this may even be talking about the internet you guys because air energy is very like internet e communication e um it's obviously gemini libra and aquarius so there we are with that. We have sextile and this is a combination of tension and flow, potential and rewarding situations. So that's what this whole reading has been, right guys? Like, sorry, that's what this whole reading has been, you guys. It's a combination of like tension and trying to find balance, trying to find harmony, trying to find like what works for us. So I feel like that is how we are meeting our future spouse. We're meeting them through a combination of tension and flow, going through perhaps a struggle, going through a mountain or climbing some type of mountain, having some type of like, I'm overcoming the situation um, and then finding our flow, finding our harmony, finding like what is working for us. We have career, okay? So I said university. Some of you may be meeting them in university. Some of you also may be meeting them um, in your career field, okay? I don't know what career field you specifically work in, but some of you may be meeting them through that, okay? We have home. I talked about online. Obviously, meeting them online, you most likely will meet them while you were like in bed scrolling or in bed swiping or in bed whatever for those of you who are or at home, wherever, uh, doing whatever you're doing on the internet where you would be meeting this person. But again, because the air element is here, it does always bring up like an internet energy for me. And then the home, obviously, unless this person is like a plumber and working on your freaking pipes, but like, I don't know, like common sense to me, the energy to me just feels more so like an internet. <sighs> Alrighty. Um, we have chasing, okay? Guys, literally, this is what I was talking about in the beginning, where you may be reliving toxic relationships in your romantic life um, from past experiences or from childhood. It's literally the, it says pursuit, toxicity, and resilience, chasing. So some of you guys are chasing or reliving, regurgitating relationships that are super toxic and super not healthy and conducive for your growth because there's some type of trauma or some type of like thing that we're holding on to from the past that we need to like, bleh, we need to get rid of it, okay? So... Uh, for some of you it's like chasing a high as well it's like chasing some type of like feeling i'm chasing this particular feeling i don't know if it's butterflies or if it's the fireworks thing or if it's the like i don't know what it is but there's some type of chasing going on then we have thinking and it says missing you craving and desire desiring 
Okay, so I'm seeing this, you guys, as us really thinking very hard on our love life and us, again, spending a lot of time and energy focusing on this instead of focusing on how it is that we can improve our lives on our own or spending a lot of time like focusing on our past lovers or our past experiences and relationships instead of living in the moment. I'm seeing this as us being too much in our head, to be honest with you. Just too much in your freaking head, right? All right, hey. Um, all right, so we have dreams and it says important dream messages are being given. So for some of you, you're receiving messages in your dreams. Perhaps you're seeing your soulmate or your future spouse in your dreams. Maybe you are receiving certain guidance in your dreams as well. So please pay attention. If you guys don't have a dream journal, I would recommend uh, keeping a dream journal next to your bed. We have take a chance, you guys, and it says you can't grow in your comfort zone. Stepping into the unknown is trusting the universe. Go for it. So for some of you, you need to take a chance into the great beyonder, get out of your comfort zone, especially in regards to the type of men or women you're dating or people you're dating. We have loosen your grip there as well that came up earlier, you guys. And it also said addiction. So maybe we are addicted to a certain type of person and we need to let go of that addiction or let go of that like desire to be with someone who's not good for us and take a chance and kind of grow outside of our comfort zone. Some of you don't want to hear that. I'm so sorry. Um, and then the last one we have here is Twin Flames. So there may be, you guys, like a runner chaser situation here for some of you. And perhaps that's what the loose in your grip is talking about. Maybe you guys have to go on your own journey in order to reconnect with your twin flame. For those of you where this is an ex who's coming back into your life, it's very, very possible, you guys, that there is a situation that's taking place where like, you have to love yourself to love your twin or you have to love yourself in order to love your soulmate. In taking care of who you are, you're taking care of your future spouse, you're taking care of your husband, your wife, like you need to do what's best for you. And this is the most important thing. And this is the thing I've been saying this entire freaking reading. I'm going to go ahead, you guys, and quickly, quickly, quickly just pull a few little notes from the bowl. We have unusual. You may be meeting your husband or your wife in an unusual manner. We have a new start. Doesn't that make us all happy after that heaviness? We have spicy. Okay, so that's saying that this is, again, not necessarily conventional. There's a little spice. We have a soldier. So for some of you, this person may be in the military. Maybe you watching are in the military. We have practical. This person may be very practical. We have within six, or not within, but we have six months. Some of you, not all of you, but some of you could be meeting this person within six months. We have love you more. That could be literally like your soulmate or your freaking husband or your wife being like, I love you more. Or that could literally be saying again, like you need to love you more. And then we have fate. Fate. So that's what I have for you guys, group one. Please let me know down below if any of this resonated, if you've already gone through this situation, um, if you guys are currently going through the situation. And again, if you have not yet gone, gone through this, I don't want you to be afraid. I want you guys to just understand that focusing on yourself and honoring yourself, respecting yourself is the most conducive way to propel you forward into meeting your husband, your wife, your spouse. So that's what I have for you guys. Thank you. I love you. And I'll talk to you guys very soon. Okay. Hi group two, welcome to your guys' reading. Let's go ahead and roll the dice really quick. Again, you guys, this is a dessert, so if you're if your sign doesn't pop up, you guys, it's fine. It's literally fine. It's okay. Virgo and Aries, Sun Moon Rising, your sign potentially, your husband, your wife, your future person you enter into a marriage contract with sign Sun Moon Rising. Leo, just Leo. Scorpio and Aries. Okay, so Mars energy is strong. Okay, Sha. We have the Four of Swords, you guys. This is rest, recharge. I always see this, you guys, when it comes up in like a reading when we're talking about like how we're meeting someone. I see this very much as like a vacation. Or like I'm meeting them on the weekend when I'm going out with my girlies and I'm having a good time when I'm resting, when I'm recharging, when I have my Starbucks in hand and I'm in Target and I'm just like in the zone relaxing, you know, it's that vibe, not necessarily specifically that vibe, but it's kind of that vibe where I'm just, I don't got a care in the world. All right. 
everything's good. Everything's chill. I am recharged, recharging, okay? Having a rest, having a chill time. So for some of you, you may be meeting this person, your husband, your wife, your future spouse, when you're kind of like off guard, when you're not really expecting it, when you're kind of just like, oh, again, <laughs> in Target, drinking your Starbucks, having a chill time or doing something else in spa on a vacation, uh, on the weekend, going out with your girlies or your guys and just relaxing. Um, now I did want confirmation, you guys, in regards to like, you know, how you're meeting this person. Cause I feel like for a lot of you, you have not yet met this person. And for some of you, you most definitely have, but for a lot of you, you have not met them. And I feel like when you're meeting this person, when this person's entering into your life, you have options. And I feel like that's why there's almost this like energy of nonchalantness because it's like, oh, I have options, baby. Like I have choices, okay? I'm not limited to just one choice. I have multiple choices, okay? I am a hot commodity and I am not concerned with making myself too readily available for one particular person, okay? That's what it feels like. Like we are in our villain era with this card. We are in our era of just like, yeah, living my life, okay? Not concerned with you. Choices, now you guys can see that right there. Choices. So the thing with this card, you guys, the warning that comes with this card is like, don't pick the option that looks the prettiest, right? Because all that glitters is not gold. So make sure that when you are choosing a partner, or when you're choosing a, yeah, a partner, <laughs> that you're not just picking the most like dazzly razzly option. Obviously, I would hope everybody who is thinking about getting married or who has a desire to get married is not immature enough to think that like the most razzly dazzly option is like the option to go for because that's not if you think that then maybe like marriage is not yet in the horizon for you like maybe we got some stuff to work on which is okay um <coughs> anyways we have decisions again so it's funny that like choices came up and then we have decisions so there's going to come a point with this situation when you meet your husband your wife your spouse where you're gonna have to make a choice because again you guys are gonna have a lot of options in front of you and you can't just keep all 29 of your boyfriends like you have to you have to choose eventually babe so this is telling me that like there's decisions that you're gonna have to make you're gonna have to make some cuts you're gonna have to really like dig deep and figure out like where it is that you see your life going and who is fitting the most seamlessly into that and not necessarily like taking someone and plucking them from their life and putting them into your life but who like melts into your life the most seamlessly what option what person that is in front of you that makes the most logistical sense who makes the most sense in regards to like what you both want moving forward um your moral compass right what you guys believe in on a I don't want to get into everything, you guys, but you know the basics, political, religion, freaking what's going on with the finance situation, uh, what's your love language, okay, how are you emotionally, uh, how are you physically, intimately, like, you guys understand the foundations of a relationship and what you need to make a relationship strong and long lasting. And I feel like with this, we are making decisions on that, okay? Okay, sure leveling up your husband your wife your spouse is going to feel like a level up they are going to feel like someone who is so much more of an upgrade versus who you've been with in the past or who you have dated in the past who you've been involved in, in the past this person is going to feel like oh baby i'm moving on up okay you know what i'm seeing this i'm seeing this as like breaking the glass ceiling i'm seeing this as literally like being able to like reach the top and like go for the freaking stars with this person that's how it feels to me it feels very much like i could not have written someone better i could not have imagined someone better i couldn't have asked for someone more perfect more lovely to be in my life like this is the most perfect relationship i could ask for this is the most I just feel like this person, your husband, your wife, they literally like melt into you. They melt into the fabric of your life and you melt into the fabric of their life. Like it's not, there's no like, <laughs> I'm trying to make this fit and it's not fitting. Like, no, like there's not, it's not that. It's like, oh my God, no, like we get along so well. We're attracted to each other. We have such good conversation. We communicate the same way. We have the same love language. Like it feels just very like, puzzle pieces fitting like i'm not trying to shove it it's just working <sighs> we have a celebration you guys okay and a celebration is obviously an 
an, an indication that things are going well. Um, now, this also talks about twin flames and soulmates because it's like 11-11, the four of wands. Um, it also talks, though, you guys, about like marriage and settling down and stability. So I find it interesting that this came out during a like who you're marrying and like when have you when are you meeting them or when did you meet them? How did you meet them? I just think it's interesting, right? Because again, this is stability. This is like groundedness. This is very much just like this is solid. Like it's not again, it doesn't feel like we're trying to force stuff. And then we have a freaking victory. Like who doesn't want a victory? Group number two. This is a victory. This is good. This relationship is going to feel like, oh, I've hit the jackpot. I've hit the freaking ding, 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 ding. Okay. So, yay for you guys. So happy. We have Jupiter growth and expansion. Okay, you guys may meet this person during a time that you are growing and expanding. I see this as graduating from college, buying our first house, buying a new car, perhaps moving to a new city. How am I growing and expanding on an individual level? And steps to do that, I feel like, is when you are meeting or the things that are taking place when you're doing that is how you're meeting this person. So for example, you guys, let's say you're moving to a new city and you're just like, oh, I don't know anyone. Like, let me put myself out there. Let me go on a dating app and like, she what's going on, right? So then you do that and you start talking to a few people. Again, we got those options going. And then we end up talking to someone who we really click with. We end up talking to someone who we really feel like connected to. And then there's just like opportunity for us to grow and expand with this person. And we're making the decision to move forward in this relationship. Let me give you another example, you guys. Let's say you just graduated from university and then you start, let's say you're graduating to become a nurse. You go into nursing school, you graduate. Now you're working in the hospital. Okay, you're working in the hospital and then you start working with someone and you're like, oh my gosh, wait a minute, I really like this person. We get along so well. And it's like, I have grown and expanded in my personal life, but also through this growth and expansion, I have met my person. <sighs> okay. Beautiful. We have fixed here, you guys, and this is stability, persistence, loyalty, and dependability. Um, this is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, you guys, okay? So again, the stability, the persistence, the dependability, the Four of Wands, you guys. Like the Four of Wands is a stabilizing uh, card. Like this is like literally a nice, strong foundation for us to sit on. So I, this doesn't surprise me. Obviously, this relationship is going to be with your spouse. So this relationship is going to have a lot of stability, a lot of groundedness, a lot of practicality in it. Um, your husband or your wife may also be one of these signs, sun, moon, rising. Also, you guys, I feel like this is going to feel like there's never going to be a point, I feel like, in the relationship. And maybe I shouldn't say never, but I feel like especially in the beginning, it's going to feel very like a melty melty situation like it's gonna feel very seamless very just like this is like this is good like this feels right it doesn't feel or freaking gosh dang i keep cussing it doesn't feel like it's something that i'm forcing or something that i'm trying to make work that's just not freaking working right we have finding this could be talking about finding happiness again you guys finding our growth and expansion help that is playing a role in how we're meeting our husband or our wife also we have transformation with the butterflies there you guys so change a current in our life courage perhaps that's talking about finding courage if we put these two cards together um some of you may be finding the courage to, like put yourself out there or finding the courage to approach this person perhaps finding the courage to love again to experience like a full hearted full like oh my god i'm falling in love i'm so happy i'm so excited type feeling again right so there is that all right, the next one we have here is honest, authentic, genuine, and present. It's transparency, you guys. So again, I don't feel like you're gonna have to hide yourself from this person. I feel like when you meet them, you're almost gonna like tell them your whole life story or they're gonna feel very compelled to tell you their whole life story. There's this feeling of like familiarity and there's this feeling of like, I know you and I trust you. And I don't know why I trust you, but I do trust you. And I feel like this is like, I, you need to know this about me. Like, I feel like you need to know me. I feel like I need to know you. I want your trust. I want to trust you. Like it feels very just transparent and raw and vulnerable. And like, we're not trying to put on a show. You guys know when you go on a date or when you start talking to someone new and you want them to see the best version of yourself. So perhaps you're like, oh, da, 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 da. and it, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like, Nah, like here's the, the shit 
stuff about me that kind of sucks and here's stuff about me that's great and here's the stuff that's in the middle here's the weird stuff and the odd stuff and the embarrassing stuff like here's just all the stuff and I'm not gonna hide you I'm not gonna hide from you the stuff like I want you to see all my stuff that's what this feels like how are we meeting this person you guys we're meeting this person I feel like through our growth and our expansion, through growing up, through finding ourselves, through having um, moments in our life where we are leveling up or moments in our life where we are expanding and changing and having some type of like leveling up. It doesn't feel like we're meeting this person when we're in a really low place in our life or when we're in a place where we're like, oh, I really need to like do this and that and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, like I really feel like you guys are in a position where you're like, yes, I have just graduated or I've just moved or I've just moved on from this toxic situation or I've started treating myself better or I've started taking care of myself or I've started this new job I'm really excited about. Like it feels like a moment in our life where like things outside of our love life is already going like really good and we're happy and we're content and we're like, we've almost taken the steps forward to make sure that we are living a life that we're proud of vulnerability open your heart allow yourself to be tender yeah you're gonna know this is your husband you're gonna know this is your wife through the level of vulnerability that you feel comfortable with it's not gonna be this like struggle to open up to them it's not gonna be a struggle to want to be raw and vulnerable with them the transparency the vulnerability is going to come very naturally group number two it's going to feel very normal it's going to feel very much like oh this is what i'm supposed to do with this person this feels right oh <gasps> We have Libra, I balance, okay? So for some of you, you may be a Libra, sun, moon, rising. Um, I don't know if that came up in the dice, but this is also connected to the seventh house, you guys. The seventh house is profound relationships, marriage, things like that. So with this, I see this very much as you guys perhaps being in a situation where again, you two balance each other out very nicely. You guys have perhaps, um, I want to say like in an inverted mirror, right? Where like you guys are opposite, but the same at the same time. Like you're very different, but very much the same. So that may be a situation for some of you. It also may be a situation where you guys feel very balanced and stable again in this connection and it doesn't feel neurotic or crazy or all over the place. We have a Jupiter again, abundance. So I see this again as you guys meeting this person during a time in your life where there is a lot of growth and expansion. Perhaps abundance or luck is also playing a role role and how it is that you are meeting your future husband or your future wife <laughs> and we have venus here with love so obviously venus is a planet of beauty love and luxury so i see this as you guys experiencing this love you guys experiencing this expansion this balance this freaking all these amazing things with venus being involved in it right experiencing abundance and growth and expansion in our love life experiencing balance in our love life uh so yeah i could also interpret that as you two being very attracted to each other it being almost like love at first sight or love at first having a date love at first meeting love at first kiss love at first you know what i'm saying it feels like the feelings that you have for each other happen very quickly and it doesn't necessarily feel like a, a slow burn it feels like a very like oh this is my person that makes sense we have recharge and it says retreat for, um, now for important self-care. Some of you guys, again, maybe meeting this person on vacation or while you're like on a weekend break or while you're like doing something that's very relaxing for you. Obviously that will be different for all of you. Um, because what I find relaxing and what you find relaxing is different. What you view as a vacation, what I view as a vacation is different. So taking time though to relax, taking time to like breathe out a little bit self-care okay you need to be meeting them on a self-care day we have true love and it says this is a divine connection self-explanatory a eh? and we have a spiritual mission and it says this connection supports energy healing on gaia and in higher realms so this connection you guys this relationship this marriage may have a spiritual purpose perhaps you two are um coming together to like you have like a bigger purpose outside of just the two of you that could be creating a child that could be showing the world that there is love or showing the people around you that like love exists um so yeah spiritual mission you and your husband or your wife have a spiritual mission together you guys could even be working um like through spirituality and doing things like 
together you guys may share a spiritual connection can i please get some notes for group number two We have finances. So you may work in finances. This person may work in finances. We have letting go. You guys, again, could be moving on from a situation when you meet your husband or your wife. We have a dating app. Obviously, you guys could be meeting the person on a dating app. We have works with hands. Um, this includes like the artistic fields. This includes like um, most uh, like trade work or most like construction work things like that this could also be like a doctor a nurse it could be someone who just works with hands it could it's a wide variety guys eh we have rising okay your rising sign or their rising sign may have popped up here we also have ambitious which i think is interesting with jupiter being here so many times we have dark passion so you guys may share a lot of passion oops between the two of you we have body again <laughs> attraction and we have social. You guys could be meeting them at a social event, which would make sense. Like if that's like your version of resting or having like a day off or having fun, right? I know for me, like when I have to go out and socialize, like if I have like a party to go to or something that's like an event, it's not relaxing to me. So to me, in my mind, that wouldn't be a rest and recharge. But for some of you, that is resting and recharging, right? Being able to go out and socialize. So that's what I have for you guys. Let me know down below if you have already met this person or if you think you know who I'm talking about. And if you have not, hope y'all are excited because it seems like a really positive, like beautiful meeting and a beautiful connection. And uh, yeah, that's what I have you guys. So thank you so much. Let me know below again. Thank you. I love you and I'll talk to you very soon. All right. Bye. Hi to my final group, group number three. Welcome to your guys' reading, you guys. Let's go ahead. You guys, oh God. <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll. Guys, we got Leo and we have Scorpio. Remember, you guys, this is just the dessert. So if your sign doesn't pop up, that's okay. Um, but this could also be the sign of your future spouse. Okay, Sun, Moon, Rising. We have Aries and we also have Capricorn. One more. Cancer and Scorpio. Sun, Moon, Rising, you guys. Fortune. Okay, you guys, fortune is playing a role in how it is that you and your future spouse are meeting. Okay, karma. Um, now, the thing with karma, you guys, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just it is what it is. Um, so this is talking about fate basically is what I'm trying to say to you. Group number three is this is fate. You and your husband and your wife are meeting through a means of fate. So I don't really feel like there's anything that you can do or anything that you can produce to help bring this person into your life sooner. Um, with the other groups, there were definitely like, it felt like a journey or it felt like there were things that we needed to implement into our life to perhaps help attract this person or there were things that we could do better or things that we could put ourselves like, you know, there. it felt like there was more of a journey. However, with this particular group, it doesn't feel like there's a journey at all. It feels kind of just like, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. You're going to meet this person when you're going to meet this person. Um, so let's get into the energy around like what it's going to feel like when you meet them. Uh, we have the Empress. So I'm kind of interpreting this, you guys, as you feeling very much like an Empress, whether you are a man or a woman, when you meet your future spouse. The Empress energy is energy of divine feminine energy. And again, whether you're a man or a woman, that is talking about being very creative, feeling very much abundant, feeling very much like you can just bring things into the world that are beautiful and going to uh, be prosperous. I see this as like, uh, for those of you who are artists, like uh, producing some type of artwork, I also see this as feeling like your most highest self, like feeling the like the best version of you. So perhaps when you meet your future spouse, you're going to be like the most <laughs> the most you that you could be, if that makes sense, you guys. The Empress is also nurturing and loving and very like. Again, feminine energy. 
Now we have the Eight of Wands, you guys. So this relationship will develop very quickly. I feel like for you guys, you're going to realize that you love this person very early on. I don't feel like it's going to be like six months down the road and you're like, oh, I think I'm falling in love. It's like, oh, we're like a week in, two weeks in, three weeks in, a month in, and I'm in love. Like I realize that my feelings are very much developed. It's going to feel very quick. You guys may enter into a relationship really quickly. You guys may get engaged really quickly or get married very quickly so yeah also I see um the eight of wands is like momentum so there could be distance between you and this person because I almost see that as like traveling in a plane or something like that to see them we have strength here this is leo energy you guys strength is talking about emotional strength okay so it's very possible you guys this person makes you feel very strong or makes you have like a a, a severe emotional reaction um i also see this as this person being very empowering or us again feeling very empowered when we meet this person okay because i'm not getting anything that feels like sad and like we're trying to overcome a struggle and usually when strength comes up i see it as like a situation that we have to be emotionally strong for but i almost feel like this person like you meeting your spouse is helping you feel more powerful like they're not depleting you of your power but they are like adding on to it if that makes sense If you have experienced this, then I would say yes, you have met them. If you have not experienced this, then I would say no, you have not met them. We have the Ace of Wands, you guys, which this can be uh, registered as like adult energy. Adult energy, you guys. This could talk about wanting to be very intimate with somebody. Obviously, a wand is like obvious. Um, it, sometimes I interpret this, you guys, as like wanting to start a family with someone because obviously I had someone one time comment and be like, well, the Ace of Wands doesn't mean kids. And I'm like, okay, but the Ace of Wands does signify like wanting to be intimate, which is pretty widely known. And obviously sometimes when you're intimate, that could lead to children. So like if two plus two is four, then like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> the Ace of Wands, you guys. Again, passion could be intimacy, wanting to have a fresh start with someone, wanting to grow in a new direction with someone. I see this as like wanting to build a home together, wanting to build a family together, wanting to build a foundation together, um, and being very excitable and passionate about this new direction that we're going into. I see this as like a spring day and having a lot of like hope and like starry eyes for the future having a lot of like oh i can't wait for us to get married and for us to have babies and for us to do this and that and da -da -da -da. like it feels very much that energy you guys know what i'm saying though like doesn't that make sense like if a card at all represents some type of intimate energy wouldn't it then also make sense that like when you have intimacy sometimes like babies happen like that's just a thing that happens and i was like i don't know i don't know miss ma'am um, okay, we have mutable here, you guys, and this is Gemini, this is Virgo, this is Sagittarius, and this is Pisces. It says surrender, fluidity, welcoming in change. Okay. So with this mutable card, you guys, obviously you could be one of these signs, your husband or your wife could be one of these signs, but I also see this as kind of just like letting life happen again going back to the freaking wheel of fortune and i know this isn't like exciting you guys to be like oh you're just gonna meet them through fate like you're just it's just fated so you're just sit back and relax and enjoy the ride like you know that's not that exciting to hear i feel personally but that is again like what this card gives me it gives me the energy of surrendering to the universe surrendering to like the outcome of fate like just not trying to control the situation not necessarily doing anything or being anything like just existing as you are is bringing this person into your life you guys okay welcoming in change not holding on to the past don't hold on to anything that's going to hold you back or anything that you know is not meant for you if the water is gonna fall through your hands let it fall through your hands okay like what happens happens what stays stays what goes goes like that's how this feels like kind of just again letting fate take control the next word I have here is Taurus. This is trust, patience, and sensuality. So sensuality is popping up again, you guys. So for some of you, it is very possible that you will build a family with this person. Now, with the trust and the patience, you guys, I do read this very much as like having trust, 
um, that this person is coming and just being patient for them because for some of you this is going to take a while for you to enter into this connection with your husband or your wife like they're not coming in when you're super young um because again I feel like once you meet them this relationship develops really quickly I feel like it just happens really fast but I feel like this is more so in reference to it may take a while for you to meet the right person. It may take a while for you to find someone that you want to spend the rest of your life with. And this is kind of just saying have trust and faith that like it's going to work out. Again, letting what comes come, letting what goes goes and not holding on to anything that's not meant for you. We have talent. Okay, so this is going back to the Empress card, you guys. I feel like for a lot of you watching this, you may be meeting your husband or your wife during a time in your life where you are expressing your talents where you are perhaps in the spotlight or you're sharing some type of uh, creation that you have worked on or a project you've been really passionate about. Um, perhaps you are meeting them through like an extra, like, I don't want to say side hustle, but perhaps you guys have like a passion in life that really gets you fired up and excited. And perhaps you guys are meeting through that. Um, some of you may be dancers or performers of some type, and that may also be a means in which you two meet. But again, this is you just living in your natural state. Like talent, like real talent, you guys, is something that just comes naturally to you. So again, your husband, your wife is just naturally going to be drawn to you. They're naturally coming into your life. It doesn't feel like there's pressure or there's anything that's like artificial being, I was gonna say inseminated. <laughs> anything that's artificially like injected into this connection, it feels very just like raw and like normal and natural and flowy and things are just flowing the way they're supposed to flow because obviously like if you have a skill set like you can master a skill you can master any skill anyone can right but to have talent I feel like talent is something that you're born with talent is something that is like yours and no one can take away your natural talents just like no one can take away like the meeting of this person like how you two are meeting is just natural <laughs> We also have, ooh, my eyeball. We also have freedom, you guys, okay? And freedom is obviously connected to you guys being free at the time that you're meeting your husband and your wife. You guys are not meant to be like locked up in a cage or restricted. Um, in meeting this person, you guys will be in a stage in your life where you feel free, where you feel ready, where you feel like you're able to just be your most authentic self. Um, this may also be talking about though this person giving you like the freedom to be you like you not feeling like you have to put on a mask again almost a feeling of empowerment is coming from this freedom card um for some of you this feels like a very specific message but for some of you this person was like sent to you from an ancestor or a relative of yours like this person may have a lot of qualities that this particular ancestor or relative um admires and they're like sending this person to you as like a you would be really good for them type energy. That's kind of what it feels like. And the reason I'm getting that you guys is because of the dove and the freedom. It almost feels like you have like a guardian angel or again, like an ancestor looking after you and really sending you this energy of like, you deserve love, you deserve happiness. And like, I'm here guiding you through this. We have falling in love and it says kissing the divine in another in yourself. So, you guys, I love this, okay? Falling in love, kissing the divine and another in yourself. So there may be obstacles in this relationship, you guys, um, in the beginning. And the reason I'm saying that is because obviously she's from the sea and he's from the sky. So again, there may be some like distance. I said that with the movement card. I, I said it feels like a plane to me. It feels like we're moving really fast to the sky. So there may be some distance, like you guys may physically live at a, dis at a distance because again, he is an angel and she is a mermaid so they obviously have physical distance because he's in the sky and she's in the ocean so put one and one together again equals two so with this you guys i see this very much as like us falling in love with someone where like it's giving me almost like romeo and juliet it's giving me almost like uh we have this like deep intimate love for each other but there may be like certain things that we have to overcome in order to like physically be together but like nothing's going to stop us from being together because we love each other so much and our love is capable of overcoming anything that's what this feels like we have energy field adjustments and it says aura cleansing and health 
Okay, so this person, you guys, may feel like a burst of energy. Them entering into your life may feel like a burst of, like, exhilaration and life and just, like... <gasps> Like, I feel so much more myself yet again. I feel so much more energized and alive and like ready to live, ready to do stuff. I don't feel like this person is at all depleting. If you're in a relationship and this person and the person you're with is depleting you of energy or they're exhausting you, that is not your person. The person that you're going to marry, you guys, is going to be someone who is very much like life giving. Okay. They're going to bring energy into your life. They're going to make you feel empowered and strong. And I wanted to use the word fear but I stopped myself. It's going to feel very, very exhilarating to be with them. You're not going to feel depleted. You're not going to feel exhausted. You're not going to feel like ugh, icky after being with them, right? I also feel like this person is playing a role in you guys being inspired like artistically or with your hobbies or with your side hustle. Like they are bringing forth some type of inspiration for that for you guys. <clears throat> We have lessons from Uranus and this says radical attraction and adult pool, adult pool. You guys know what the word adult is uh, replacing um, adult pool comes from uh, come from come with inconsistency and detachment, a theme of freedom or commitment. No expectations are the best expectations to have. The way I'm seeing this um, Uranus, you guys, I'm seeing this as your guys' meeting, perhaps again, being a little bit like not clear, not certain, but I'm also seeing this, you guys, as like this person not putting any expectations on you, which again is giving you freedom to be who you are and to live the way you want to live and vice versa. Like you guys are having a very like, you have a relationship that is like, I'm not, I don't own you. Like I'm not going to put bars on you. I'm not going to put chains on you. Like you are not it's not that you're not meant to be tied down like in a relationship but it's like you are who you are and I accept and love you for who you are and I just want you to be the most you that you can be and I want you to feel free to do what you want to do and to live the life that you want to live and I want to support you through that that's what this feels like um now it's talking about the inconsistency with the adult um with the adult energy and detachment so there may be issues around like the adult energy in your guys's relationship that needs healing which is not a big deal like you that's 100 fixable <clears throat> maybe you or your partner feel detached from adult intimacy um we have new patterns here and it says do things differently in order to bring health health and vitality into your love life so new patterns will be formed through this relationship, you guys, new healthy patterns. I feel like this connection, this relationship with your spouse is going to be the healthiest relationship that you had been in um, thus far. I feel like it's going to be very, I don't want to say healing necessarily, but it feels almost cathartic. It feels almost like, oh, like this makes sense that we get along. This makes sense that like we're getting married because I don't know, it just, it's healthy and it's right and it doesn't feel like again it doesn't feel like we're trying to change each other we're trying to alter the state of like who we are on an individual level like it feels like we're just very accepting and open to each other's differences and open to each other being like individuals yeah healthy patterns healthy communication you guys okay we have a new love and it says a new love or a new phase in love is beginning so this person coming into your guys's life who you're going to marry is most likely going to be somebody new which I know most of you are probably happy to hear. Oh me, oh my. And then the last card I have for you guys, it's a black moon Lilith. Okay, so this is talking about mystery, you guys, but this is also, which I think is kind of interesting because this is also talking about like the untamable woman. This is talking about like the wild and free woman. So I see this yet again as this person really encouraging you guys to be the most divinely feminine, wild and free person that you can be. I don't want to keep you from experiencing any type of pleasure. I don't want to keep you from your happiness. I don't want to keep you from what is going to bring you joy in life. I want you to go after what you want. I want to support you um, in a manner that's very just like open-minded and not like, again, like weighed down and not like 
it doesn't feel like this person is putting heavy like limits on you or heavy expectations on you like they literally just want you to live in the most like open and like raw form of yourself i don't know if you guys know the story of lilith i'll give you a quick synopsis basically she was um, she was adam's first wife um she enjoyed being in control in the adult manner which shows up here in the reading as well um but she wanted to be in control and be on top in the adult manner and adam was like nah girl that's not what's up for me um so they were like goodbye toodaloo she went and did her own thing with mr loose okay so and then adam and eve you know whatever okay submission blah okay but lilith was very much like no like i want to feel good too i want to do what makes me happy too and she left the garden and she was like goodbye like i'm gonna go find my happiness i'm going to be wild and free and do what makes me happy and it feels like this person you guys and not to give anyone the like heebie-jeebies because I know some people don't like love the energy of Lucifer <laughs> and Lilith. Like I know it's like dark energy for some people. It's not dark energy, but for some people they interpret it that way. The point is I'm seeing this very much as like this person is like your Lucifer and you are the, you're the Lilith, right? Like that's how I'm seeing this. Like this person is giving you your freedom. And I'm not saying that exactly. Like it's not that exact situation, but that's like an example of how I'm viewing this relationship and how I'm viewing how you're going to feel. It's going to feel very much like this person cares about my pleasure. This person cares about like what feels good for me. And it's not all about them. It's not all focused on like what they want, what they need, what feels good for them. Like it feels like an equal partnership, you guys, if I'm being honest. So I love that group number three. I'm going to go ahead Wow, I really love that. I feel like the way the story came together made me really happy and just like, oh, nice. And I know, again, not all of you are going to love that analogy I just gave. Um, but just look, if you want to take away like Lucifer and Lilith, like you can do that and like replace it with a different type of name or whatever. But the point is there's like freedom and like I care about your pleasure. I care about you and who you are in your life and not necessarily just me and what I want. <sighs> okay, is this real? You guys, we have unexpected twice, which I was completely unaware that unexpected was like in here twice, which wouldn't you agree, you guys, unexpected coming in literally connects back to the freaking Wheel of Fortune with you guys meeting this person in a very just like faded way, unexpected manner, perhaps leveling up. Yes, Miss Mom. Okay, leveling up. I love it. Okay, we have exotic. So you guys may um, come from different ethnic backgrounds or different nationality backgrounds national backgrounds we have tattoos okay we have works with animals so either you or this other person may work with animals maybe you guys have a very special relationship with animals we have humble we love a humble king we love a humble queen we have smile this person may have a very beautiful smile or your smile may be very beautiful loose ends so perhaps we are tying up loose ends before meeting this person 22 which you guys 222 two, two, I feel like is very much connected to like that soulmate energy right we have a north maybe you guys are going or visiting the north or you live in the north or this person lives in the north and we have 14 okay so your birthday could be on the 14th perhaps you are meeting this person on the 14th but that is what I have for you guys group number three let me know down below if this resonated or if you're excited to be honest this is my favorite group of the day I'm excited for this. So if you have met them already and you know who this is, let me know. Thank you. I love you. And I'll talk to you guys really soon. Okay. Bye.